Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Genshin Impact. My name is Grin and here we are back in Mondstadt. It's been a hot minute. Ladies and gentlemen, today uh, I want to talk to you guys about something specifically, especially now that we're in kind of the lull and I'm assuming we've seen 2.2. And yeah, we're just kind of hanging out, waiting patiently, uh, hoping for the events to pop off in a big way and all of these things. Regardless, a couple days ago, um, an absolutely fantastical person came into my chat um, and basically asked me a very good like streamer question, which is cool, um, of what was the biggest mistake I ever made in Genshin. Um, and some of you guys know this who uh, were with me for a long time and some of you don't know this. And I thought this was actually a pretty good question to ask all of us so that we cannot make the same mistakes. Um, kind of as like a bank vault of our own suffering to make new players, hopefully, uh, not feel <laughs> such suffering. Because the anniversary rewards, as little as they may be, are probably pulling in some people. Some. <laughs> anyway, regardless, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I wanted to tell you what my biggest regret with Genshin Impact is. Uh, in terms of, specifically for me, it's spending. Uh, I know, it could be for you guys, it could be leveling up, it could be anything. Uh, but for me, it is absolutely, without a doubt, spending. Uh, this is kind of going to be a hybrid video of me telling you guys a story, as well as telling you guys and trying to help people who are just getting into the game uh, and explaining why I think certain things I did were absolutely big wrong, not good, and etc. Going into the second year of Genshin, I feel like there may be some people who are getting into the game or who will get into the game and maybe could use some advice. Anyways, story time. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> uh, essentially, ladies and gentlemen, way, way, way back in the day, when we were just getting into this game, and we were only getting a couple uh, new characters, this is back when I think I was relatively free to play. I hadn't, I didn't spend any money in the game. Um, for those of you guys who didn't know, I was, I got like basically enough characters to where if I were just to invest in them, I would have been able to beat the entire game, Clune Spiral Abyss, without uh, spending money. But uh, what I did do is one of you guys came into one of my streams a while ago, or like way, way, way back in the beginning, and said how good of a deal the Welkin Moon is. Um, if you play a lot, like you play every day, do your dailies, then leave. It's pretty good. It's a really good investment, especially for the fact that you'll have to, you'll only have to skip one banner and you'll be able to wish on two and you'll be relatively okay, given your luck. That's the thing also. I got pr pretty good lucky-wise in the Genshin, but regardless, that's what I started to do. And then occasionally I bought a Season Pass. Um, now, all in all, this was relatively fine. Season Pass for Canadian, fortunately, is $14. For US, it's $10. Uh, and of course, for uh, the Welkin Moon, it's uh, seven uh, or six dollars or five dollars, maybe for US, uh, seven or six dollars for Canadian. A little bit unfortunate, but point being is it's six dollars for in a couple months to be able to get a cool character and to have some gameplay to play and to just enjoy the whole thing. Sure, six, seven dollars. Sure, that's enough for me to have the happiness of having a new character and having new things to level up and having something to do and all of these fun things. So I said, sure, but I had this thing in my my gut that, that made me feel a little bad where I was but I was kind of playing as a free to play. And my whole thing is that I like to do. I want to see if a game uh, I started doing this and let it die. Another game we covered on the channel, but a game's barometer for f their free to play acceptance is whether you can do just about everything in the game without having to spend a copious amount of money. So I've always looked at it that way. So I try to get as far as I possibly can without spending money. And almost in every time I've tried it, I've gotten to the very end, which is awesome. It just may take a longer time or more pre preparation but you'll be able to get there. Genshin is no different. But I had this thing in my stomach where I was like, well, wait, this game is awesome. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. There's constantly new events. I want to get back to the game. Uh, so back in the day, I was constantly saying who would be the character that I would finally give back to the game, even though I was already spending maybe like a couple, you know, basically like every two months, I'd spend maybe $20, maybe $10. Um, yeah, I think it was only $10 because I don't. I, that's, I rarely bought the, uh, this, the Welkin... The Battle Pass. It was only ever the Welkin Moon, and I was able to get a lot of characters, as you guys know, from that. Regardless, um, time went on, time went on. I skipped Ganyu. I ended up going for Xiao. All of these things. I was a little, another little uh, hyper tiny mistake, albeit a big one. <laughs> now that we're a year in, and we have still yet to get a Ganyu rerun, it feels really bad. Anyways, but alas, I got Xiao, like I mentioned, which depleted almost all of my Primo gems. So then. Uh, Hu Tao came out and I always thought oh, I liked Xiao more uh, than Hu Tao, but then Hu Tao came out with 
everything. Hu Tao came out with an animation sprint cancel. She came out with some crazy cool eyes. She has a crazy f amazing personality that's like quirky and fun and uh, very happy and jovial and all these things positive as hell. Uh, but also is a weirdo. <laughs> She's like a goth fucking uh, cemetery person. So uh, she was just fantastic in every regard and full sending all of her abilities and etc. And she was also just so strong. Like stupidly strong. To where I was like actually I really like the idea of this character. I really like her kit more or less. I'll finally give and, and pay for Primo Gems. Or sorry, Genesis Crystals. And this is where I had like a super big warped idea of what the currencies were in the game. So essentially, if you guys look at this, um, we have this. We have basically our Primo Gems and then you have your Genesis Crystals. Uh, and once you buy them for the first time, they give you double of whatever they're giving. So 300 to 300, 900 to 900, boom. So you'll be able to get double. Um, now the thing is, is I never realized how absolutely skewed this is. This is a one to one comparison for Primo Gems. I thought it was like like 10x or like a good bit more. It is not. So when you look at like, if anyone knows, what do you call it? 3,000. So that's the same price. That's $70. That's the same price for a full price game with a shit ton of content. You can buy The Witcher for that. And uh, way less than that now, but even say if it would, when it just came out, you can buy that and get a fuck ton of content. Now you can get the anniversary edition of The Witcher for that has even more content than anyone would re really play. <laughs> Only psychopaths. Anyway, but alas, that's nothing. That's not even like uh, you need, uh, what do you call it, 90 Primo Gems. More than that, 120 really, uh, in order to get a, a five-star character. That's only giving you 3,000. That's not, or 6,000 on the first per pull of this. That's not enough to get the thing, to guarantee get the thing. Um, so it was just like, oh my God, this single-handedly, ladies and gentlemen. And the thing is, is I, this never clicked until after, which sucked. So if there's my biggest, my biggest like failure, hatred thing for Genshin, um, is that this became this made my experience feel abnormal and and uh, excessive so basically up until the point in which I was spending I was like well within um, like f 50 or 40 dollars and I've been playing for a long time I got all the way up to Hu Tao's banner I was playing for a long time and the only thing I ever needed was the gen the, the what do you call it the welcome moon and I was smooth sailing baby I was good at seven dollars sure have a good time. You get a bunch of stuff. Awesome. Every day you get to cash it in like your library card. You punch it in. Boom. You get some primo gems. If you play long term, you're going to get a lot out of this. If you don't, then no, you're not. <laughs> but this, um, to me, single-handedly broke my whole thing because, again, I was doing good. I was spending like $40 on a game I was playing for months. It felt awesome. It felt like, a, okay, this is fair. This is really, it's just like a proper depiction. And then you have this, which is you spending, uh, this is the one I bought, <clears throat> At you spending so so much money for for nothing for you're not even guaranteed to get any of that uh so it is just woefully like ugh. It, to me this is always going to be um the single-handedly the like the worst situation in terms of what you can do for genshin impact do not by any means buy the genesis crystals at all um they are it's insane um and the it also weird that they're like i'm so happy that the welkin moon exists because it's relatively amazing um not only that but if you do your daily commissions it's not just the welkin moon it's, it's the fact that if you do your daily commissions you do the welkin moon you do the events you cumulatively build up a great deal if you just do the events it's not that great if you just do your dailies it's not that great but if you throw an extra 90 in there every single day it's not bad now the good news is you can also buy like three of these cards and get a and get double of the uh, instantly get 3000 of that so it's somewhat worth doing that. But if I could give you guys anything, yeah, you'll get uh, 270 Primo Gems uh, in total um, over the course of 30 days. Uh, that's a pretty good bit. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good amount, especially considering it's compound with everything else that you're doing, your your uh, your uh, activities that take two seconds to complete, your dailies, which take one second to complete. Yeah, so you'll be good to go. But this was single-handedly my biggest regret in Genshin because this took me from being like, hey guys, you can get a lot out of this game. I've got a lot out of this game and all I've spent is like $40, uh, really. Um, and even if that, it wasn't that much. And I, I, I honestly, that might not even be true. But, like, sorry, it might have been less than $40, what I'm saying. Um, just by me getting the Welcome Moons and whatnot. But regardless, and then a couple of battle passes whenever I was, like, really low on uh, experience books. Um, anyways, but me buying this 
put me past a hundred dollars 40 plus 70 or 80 or 70 i think at the time it might have been 80 actually anyways uh, it was 70 boom it just chunked my 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 thing and also i got so I, I was only i was barely able because i never registered it was only six thousand primo gems and i had zero pity uh, i actually i'm not even sure if i had zero pity i think i i yeah i had a little bit of pity so i had to use this to go to the very furthest and i had nothing left over after it and consider that i was getting for like four months the genesis uh or sorry the the uh, uh the welkin moon with the daily thing so i got 30 uh per month so it was a it added up over time um but uh i used up almost all of my genesis crystals and came out of that with one hu tao now, yes hu tao is an amazing character but that is insane i could have just i could have just skipped hu tao and be able to buy the next couple things so like and this is what i think is the best bang for your buck having been a year in and they might change some stuff but this is having this is the most best bang for your buck you can buy the uh the welkin moon you can buy if you want on occasion i wouldn't suggest doing every single time because then you'll just have an absolute abundance of material and resource which you don't need if you're just doing the events and such uh but you can also buy the battle pass but i would suggest just buy like if you're going to spend like if you're like me who's like i've been playing this game for a year I can find sixty dollars. You know, I've, I've got so much enjoyment out of this game. I want to give back to it. I'll give it the X Y Z. Do not buy this. Do not buy it, please God. <laughs> Do not buy this. It's so not worth it. <laughs> Instead, take your sixty dollars, your forty dollars, your fifty dollars, or however much you think this game is worth in terms of your enjoyment, and spend it all into the Welkin Moon. Please, 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 do not, do not, do not <laughs> spend that into this. It is super not worth it. It is not going to give you a 90 pull, but if you do, if you play consistently, you do your dailies and you do the events, this will be able to allow you to basically, depending on your luck, skip a banner, wish on a banner, uh, skip on, skip a banner, wish on a banner. And uh, if you don't do this and you don't do the dailies, uh, then you will have to skip like two banners and do that. So there is still a way for you to play. But... I just think this is such, like, if I could go back in time, this would be the one thing I'd change. I'd just be like, don't buy the Genesis Crystals. Just buy a lot of these. And the thing is, this is also why I kicked myself in the, in the thing. Um, because I was so obsessed with being free to play, like I said, I, I didn't want to spend anything in the game. Anything. Um, before I was able to uh, beat everything, basically. Like, I get enough characters where I got Zhongli, I got Razor, I got a bunch of characters, I got Venti, um, I got a, like very good, I got, Bido, I got a bunch of DPS characters that I could have, if I just leveled the shit out of their talents and put them on some cool artifact sets, they wouldn't be able to full send it and kill Spiral Abyss easily. Um, but I just, I jumped around because I like playing characters, I like covering them, so we kind of uh, spread ourselves out thin. But, regardless, I waited a long, long time long time to get the welkin moon um so if i would have just from the very start been like ah i'm gonna spend 20 dollars worth of money uh canadian dollars into the welkin moon buying like a couple of these uh and then just every day i play i'll have one also it's 20 dollars boom boom pull 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 and you're also making use of this from the very beginning rather than like the halfway point which is kind of what we were doing um and then if i would have done that I don't think I would have ever, ever, ever needed uh, any of the Genesis Crystals. You, I still don't, honestly. You don't need every single character that comes out. Uh, like right now, we have Kakomi, who most people are like, oh my god, it's like, I mean, dude, it's just a time for you to regenerate. Calm down. <laughs> like, fuck. I'm, I'm regenerating past a bunch of necessity. I have 23,000 Primo Gems. Um, and a, a couple, couple thousand uh, of the one thing. So that is single-handedly my biggest mistake with Genshin um, is spending money into this because it took my spending from like, okay, this is reasonable, like 40, 40 to 50 to $60 uh, worth, uh, and it made it jump to like 70 or 80 I think it was 80 at the time, uh, 80%, like $80, uh, which put me well over $120 for a video game, um, which isn't bad considering I've been playing it for a long time, but even still, it's still within the realm of possibilities where it never needed to be this way. If you want to get the most out of Genshin, get the Welkin Moon sooner rather than later. And on occasion, when you're low on experience books and Mora, consider buying the Battle Pass. Consider it. You don't need to do it that often at all. Um, especially, again, if you're doing the events, you usually have a shit ton of experience books in there. You're good to go there. So if you're a new player, just buy the Welkin Moon. If you ever want to get back to the game, buy the Welkin Moon. It's the best investment you probably will make because this is a game that you play a lot for a long period of time, uh, unless you don't have that access. But this is a mobile game, so you can get on your phone, crank it out, and then just log in, grab your stuff, run around to your dailies, even as clunky as it may be on mobile, and then be done. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> and you'll be progressing a great deal. And then you can wait to the very last minute on the weekends uh, to do the the moonlight whatever and actually have a good bit of gameplay to crank out on the weekend. 
um, and then just play like that if you're if you're super uh, sparse on time or don't have time. Okay, so now we're kind of d past past my my shame, <laughs> my heartache, all that. Uh, now I want to tell you, tell you guys if if there are any people coming into Genshin on year two, what what has changed? What do you not have to put up with at all? And what is a lot of the guides talking about is no longer relevant. Uh, is how good certain characters are now. So what I mean by that um, is when we were just starting out, nobody knew shit. And it's hilarious looking back on it because it's like if it's one of those moments where if you were to go back in time, you like you could have made the most insane cracked team ever. But because no one had enough information, because everything was on a time window, no one really knew. Or if you did, no one was listening because there were five stars and they were so much better than anything else. And look at them, they're yellow <laughs> and all of these things. Orange and shit, craziness. Um, but now in Genshin... Honestly, some of the most insanely amazing characters are ones you have by default. Well, mo some people have. Um, one thing that people have always, no matter what you do, is this. Shangling <laughs> is this. <laughs> Shang no, Shangling is right. Shangling um, is now one of the best characters in the game. The reason why she wasn't that great when she started out, um, well, she was always okay, um, but the thing is, is that her alt was on a decently long cooldown, um, but also it was just that her artifact set wasn't really there. Um, she didn't really have a great artifact set that went with her. She had Noblest Oblige, which was kind of just good, but it was something just to kind of put on characters for your team, and if you had a healer or any of the healers we're going to talk about, It'd be more than ta more than okay. But now with this artifact set, and if you happen to get one of the most useless weapons in the game, <laughs> um, or if you happen to get the catch, uh, she becomes unearth like ungodly strong, um, and, and she just can be additive to any ga any team. Also, there are very few characters in the game that have ver reverse uh, vaporize. So if there's ever a hydro character that just starts slapping in terms of big DPS damage, she's gonna be able to reverse detonate the pyro, um, and she hits very very hard. Um, and she's also incredibly easy to build because she can use anything. Uh, energy recharge, crit rate, crit damage, uh, attack percent, all that stuff is incredibly good. And as of Constellations, most of her things are not 100% necessary. The one that does make her, like, fix her one problem is this one. Um, it, and, it, and also, it doesn't really do that because her Pyro NATO lasts forever. If you have this, it's stupid long. Your, like, your Pyro NATO just constantly keeps outputting damage, which does 10x her damage because it's out for such a long time. A period of time again um, but this also gives her a significantly higher amount of uh of time to like to like cook basically so you're going to be having a hundred percent uptime almost on this um also she's one of the few characters where the pyro nato damage itself of it sweeping around and hitting things is greater than the cast which is cool um and yeah yeah it says his cooldown is 20 seconds it does not feel that way especially with a 40 percent increase uh yeah also uh, this is something that's just kind of passive but yet when she when goba dies uh you get a 10 percent attack it's Honestly, not that worth it, but it's just something there. <laughs> Anyways. Also, Goba is pretty goddamn fantastic. Uh, Goba, you just chuck him out, and he just starts doing a good pyro application and damage. So, my whole point in this um, is just that for new players, a lot of people didn't know the strength of Shangling. Uh, because some, some, somewhat it didn't exist. But there are a few characters that were always strong and always unbelievable. But uh, but people just didn't have the resources to invest in everybody. So instead of investing in Bennett, people at the very, very beginning started investing in their new 5-star that they happened to get lucky and pull, or unlucky and pull, um, is Chi-Chi. So, uh, so yeah, so people, there's just to say that like the graph in terms of the incredible utility and value of certain characters were not fully established. They were kind of assumed and heard about, but no one was like, this is it. Boom. So my point is, is for any new players, uh, almost every character in the game now that people kind of underlooked now have an artifact set that makes them come undone and just rip shit apart. Uh, and it's very, very good, and and yeah, the only negative is in order to get to that artifact set, you do need to reach a high enough AR to where you can get to Inazuma, but that should be really fine, honestly. I think it's 31, and with the quests that were released within the last year in the the Mondstadt and Leeway, you'll be able to grind up to 30 uh, immediately to get be able to get to things. So you'll have a ton of content just to chew through. Um, and yeah, so when you log into Genshin, you do some of the events, you're going to have like a bunch of random characters you could have noelle noelle has been okay for and pretty good for a long time kaya is incredible <laughs> okay also that's something i didn't mention um 
like, okay, so two of the free-to-play play characters when the game just came out was Shang Ling and Kaya. These are characters that regardless of what you do, you have. Um, well, Shang Ling, you have to complete a certain amount of a Spiral Abyss, but it's pretty easy just to be getting part of it all. Anyways, uh, but now you have Shang Ling and Kaya. These perfectly work within each other. Kaya gives a really tight radius to, to, him, to the person, and he basically gives you an alt that just circles you really, really tight. And Shang Ling gives you a wide berth of AoE damage. And Kaya and Shang Ling are reverse melting themselves. So right off the bat, you have a shit ton of damage if you level up these characters. That's fantastic. And now you only need a DPS. Uh, now that's the really the big hunt in Genshin Impact, to tell you the truth. And that's why... Um, it's very, it's a very good idea if you're just starting out to wish on a banner that has a lot of main DPSs or has a five-star DPS on it, uh, because that is the thing that's like you already have one of the best teams in the game with Kaya and Shangling. The end of story. Uh, now you just need a person to play when you've already activated their abilities and just need to uh, bulldoze. Bido is a pretty good choice. Um, uh, what do you call it? Fischl can also be a pretty good choice, although. Uh, well, people, I think Fischl was only there for an event. Um, Shangling can work if you have enough constellations, although that's kind of just getting by. Yeah, honestly, if you can, if you can somehow find like like any other character, like honestly, Razor to me is the best free to play f like main DPS kind of four star. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody though, and I'll regret saying that. Um, Bennett can also be a four, uh, like an amazing DPS if you have him. Uh, but when you're just starting out, I don't know if you want to sparse out your your like your stuff to be because in order to have Bennett be a DPS you need to kind of hyper farm artifacts to some extent so it's a little bit weird and a little bit fucky but uh but yeah needless to say Mahoyo did an amazing thing where they made Shangling and Kaya both free to play characters that everybody has uh, be some of the most best characters that you can invest in especially Shangling uh Kaya can also be nuts though again these characters get become more insane with on uh with constellations just take that in, uh, into, into consideration. But yeah, point being is that a year in to Genshin, you no longer have to be like, well, that character's fun, but are they good? Yeah, most, almost every character in the game has an artifact set that's uh, specifically perfect for them. Uh, specifically, the character we just mentioned, Shang and Kaya, both need, uh, both love this artifact set that's found right here. Again, if you go there, you farm this. You're also going to be getting a pretty good like DPS artifact set, albeit it's going to chew away some of your alt. It's still better than nothing, uh, better than, uh, you know, a, a, an artifact set that has literally nothing to do with a DPS, so it's just support, support, so you're wasting your resin only on support artifacts. No, you're wasting your resin on two very useful artifact sets. But yes, do not fall under the five-star trap. The, like, only five stars can become good. Five stars usually just specialize, and they scale a little bit better. That's kind of it. Um, but yeah, Shangling, Kaya, you can absolutely get by with just them. So if you're struggling with coming up for another team for your Spiral Abyss or whatever, then that's a great place to start. It's just leveling up your characters and giving them one of the best artifact sets in the game and making them pop off in a great in a huge way. Now, uh, also the other thing that I think is just relevant uh, is, like for the most part, how this usually works is characters go beyond weapons sometimes most of the time there's are there are a couple outliers like this sword that has a stupid amount of crit rate and a hu tao's weapon which just scales incredibly hard as well anyways uh how things mostly sequence in genshin is you need to find enough characters at least one or two main dps's in which you can just full send and then other support characters that can either heal you and deal damage and of course you guessed it some of the best characters in the game do both Bennett is incredible because he heals you to like in a stupid, oh, a stupid wow. extent. Um, also, he happens to give you bonus attack, so it makes all the other characters in the area uh, aura just hit that much harder. And he also snapshots them, so if you activate Shangling's alt in his super, it permanently has the damage buff, even if you exit his alt, which is great. Uh, the other thing uh, is Diona. Diona is fantastic, um, absolutely incredible amazing character uh she she heals the shit out of you and she also provides you with another shield which which is crazy but also her her healing also damages enemies albeit a little bit and then the last thing is if you have constellations for her, that's when she really becomes like the only choice <laughs> really uh where she just gives everyone in your party a shit ton of uh elemental mastery uh which just helps with every same same as Bennett, just crazy uh a amplification of your abilities and such anywho i will say i think sayu is criminally underrated at this point like super underrated uh yeah like i still think it's bennett uh eh, i think it's bennett 
and then it's a, it's a it's not it's either Diona or or her Sayu because constellations matter with Diona. Honestly, I would put Sayu above Diona if you didn't have max constellations or at least a couple constellations for Diona. Uh, but if you have a lot of constellations for Diona, I would put her above that. But if you have a lot of constellations for Sa Sayu, then I might put her above. Well, I'd probably put her in the same exact thing. So needless to say, if you have Sayu, you're probably gonna be cooking really well. But yeah, I just that's just something I'm thinking about when I when I'm thinking of uh, like any advice I can give to new players is one of the things I'll interact with. I think is is there what should I spend money on this game or what should I spend money on if I should uh, and should I? Uh, arguably no, but seven dollars most people can find, especially if it's you know once a month. Most people can buy a sixty dollar game. Well, not most people, but a good bit of people eventually, if they put away enough money, can buy a a sixty dollar game. Uh, given your like country, I know like like for me, I'm in Canada. I complain about our dollar being lesser than U.S., but <laughs> I'm sure in some other places it's super low or super high. Sorry. Also, the other thing I'm gonna I think I could hear people say is like I'm tired of dying. How do I progress? So, you know, everyone's talking about how everything's so easy, but I I, I just got into the game and I. Like, what do I invest in? We already made a video about, like, how how to gain power within this game. But the new new hotness is the fact that there are certain characters that people undermined in the past. And a lot of guides and stuff that you'll see are tier lists that are old. Uh, you'll see people be like, oh, this character is kind of shitty. But no, now they're one of the best characters in the game. Shangling, Kaya are incredible. Uh, well, Kaya's always been a little bit ahead of Shangling because uh, he recently had an artifact set that helped him with crit rate and such. But, but I don't know. I still think the new artifact set would really work with him as well but i digress also barbara works too but but barbara you want something that you want a healer that does just doesn't heal and maybe a, maybe you know kokomi kind of does do a little bit of damage but she mainly just heals anyways <laughs> uh but ladies and gentlemen i uh i'm not sure what else what else i could add yeah the only other thing is if you're just getting into the game do not like you will eventually run out of content because Genshin is formulaically made to be a game where you play for a long period of time with uh, with little but like play for a short ass amount of time as well. So eventually you get to the point where you burn through all the story story stuff and uh, and you don't have much else to do and in that case you're literally just waiting patiently doing the bare minimum every single day so yeah that's that's the kind of the hellscape that some of us are in but also is a little bit peaceful so you don't have to do too much every single day even though some of us would like to do more some days than others but anyways um yeah i don't know, i have no idea what else to say besides uh, besides the things that we mentioned i just want to tell, tell you guys about my biggest regret within genshin also yuck what is what is ugh, ugh. <laughs> um anyways yeah i just want to tell you guys about what i was feeling a little ugh, it's also bad can you stop can you i just go here <laughs> fucking yuck dude big yuck that looks even more uncomfortable right, let's just go to the ground <laughs> i guess anyways uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what else to say, but perhaps you do. What would you give, uh, advice, what kind of advice or uh, whatnot, or what kind of, what was your biggest mistake within Genshin? What kind of advice, again, like I said, would you give to people just getting into Genshin? That's mine, even though I feel like I'm missing a lot. Um, but yeah, basically, to summarize, buy the Welkin Moon, consider buying the Battle Pass, if you're at all considering spending money, and it's, the Welkin Moon is better done sooner rather than later, you do not have to spend money in this game. It will just mean that you have to skip two banners, usually not just the one, given your luck. But anyways, second thing is a lot of the characters in the game now have an artifact set that sets them free. So a lot of the previous guides and information you'll see if you're just getting into the game or looking into information is a little bit outdated and is very, very, uh, Shangling is incredible. Uh, Kaya, massively good. Um, and again, there's a certain value on healers uh, and that's why. It's because they do more than one thing. Um, and, and then last thing is the, like the priority of, of banners. Usually you go for characters and try to get a main DPS, uh, at least two, at least two, they can be four stars. It doesn't matter. Um, but you want to get two main DPSs and then at that point you can just w basically level up your current characters or you could get some side characters that are also good. Like if you don't have ba a Bido, you can level up Bido. If you have Sara, you can level up Sara. Um, but you mainly need, uh, like again, the, just an amazing team is a DPS. Uh, Shang Ling, Kaya, that will basically take care of each other, uh, and then any healer that can take care of your main DPS and the rest of your team. If that's Barbara, yikes, 
but sure, it can work. And then your other team is just going to come from whenever you, the next couple months when you wish on banners and when you, if you get lucky and if you don't, you kind of have to change your thing around that. Uh, but needless to say, there's a lot more options now that we're a year in with a bunch of new do uh, domains. Uh, there's certain characters that are scale off physical damage and now they have an artifact set called the Pale Flame that just sets them free or lets them wreck shit that much faster. Uh, and yeah, needless to say, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that made some some sense. Uh, but again, this is also mainly a video for, for my audience to kind of try to help people who are just getting into the game. But alas, uh, that is also my biggest mistake with Genshin. I would love to hear what your guys is, is, are as well, whether it's uh, ascending a certain character. Although again, I think like even if you leveled up most characters in the game, you can make them pretty goddamn good, you know? Now, I will admit some characters work better with others, given your team, but still... Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, also, I forget to always say this, but thank you so much uh, for if you did support the video in any and every way. Thank you so much. Uh, also, uh, hopefully you enjoy the game. Uh, there's a whole year ahead of us probably of uh, content. Hopefully not too much repeatable content or repeating content. Please let it be repeatable. Holy shit. <laughs> Please let it be repeatable. Anyways, hopefully you guys do enjoy the rest of your day. And goodbye.